was my birthday last week. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. And by that same token, I'm also a year older. <laughs> Thank you. Which also means I'm dying. Not just because I'm up here and I might have stage fright, but I'm dying. And by the same token, so are you. In fact, we're all dying. We're all growing older. Just think about the last seven days. How have you really lived the last seven days? Fully? Have you been excited about everything that you've been doing in your life the last week? Or was it just another week? You see, at some point, we're all going to reach the final curtain. And for most of us, we have no idea when that will be. It will be a complete surprise. There are people here in Panama this afternoon who won't arrive home this evening. And right now, they have no idea. Do you remember the film Forrest Gump? Yes. Great. So in the film, Tom Hanks says, my mama says, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. <laughs> and well, neither did I. You see, not so long ago, this is my mom, and she was diagnosed with cancer. She's full of life. She's always been healthy. She's always been sporty. She's an award-winning businesswoman. And now she's fighting for her life. And I can't believe it. <laughs> um, and then six months ago, my brother, with his fiance there, younger than me, 34 years old, was also diagnosed with cancer. He's a brilliant entrepreneur. He's fun-loving. And again, now he's fighting for his life. So I think there might be some of you here this afternoon who can relate to that, who have friends and family who perhaps don't have that long to live. And you know how it feels. And I began to see two things. One, that I'm afraid of losing them. And two, that I'm actually afraid of losing myself in the never-ending busyness of my life. I began to notice, really, how my life was just passing me by, and I wasn't really all that awake to it. I wasn't really connected to my own life. And perhaps some of you can begin to feel the same way. You see, so we live and we work in a never-ending cycle of busyness. Most of us will re recognize the hamster wheel <laughs> we've got up here. And we go round and round and round and round in circles. And yet what we don't often think about is actually life can be taken away in a heartbeat. And do we ever really stop and think about really how magnificent our life is? How we're really evolving as human beings and how incredible our evolution actually is? This is home. Isn't she beautiful? Mother Earth. <laughs> you see, we're spinning around space, dancing around space, in this incredible planet. And we get to inspire one another, we get to communicate, we get to invent, we get to live, laugh and love together, and all too often fight with one another. So I just have a quick thought for you here. What would happen if you were told you had one week to live? Just one. And if you knew that in seven days your connection to this life was to be severed, done, over, finished, what difference would that make to you? How would you feel? What about your loved ones? How would you like to be remembered? You see, will I wait until my gravestone says, rest in peace? Hell no. 
I want peace right now. I want to live life now. I want joy right now. You see? I want this before life is taken away from me. It's so easy to drift in a deadpan state of, I'm fine. Life's okay, can't complain. And yet, since the Big Bang, 14 billion years ago, we've got here now, and your life, you're telling me your life is fine? It's okay? Well, <laughs> I have another definition of fine for you. And perhaps the next time somebody asks you, how are you? You won't just say, I'm fine. Frustrated, insecure, neurotic, and exhausted. <laughs> That's fine for you. So the, perhaps the next time somebody asks you how you are, how about responding with, amazing, great, living my dream. Something a little bit more engaging, something a little bit more, something that brings you alive. Not sends everyone to sleep, okay? Shakespeare said it pretty well when he said, we are such stuff as dreams are made on, and our little life is rounded with a sleep. Will we wait until the last week to truly wake up, to smell the coffee, and to smell the roses? before it's too late? Will we really start to appreciate the gl most glorious part of our lives, which is right here, right now, in the present moment? Why? Because the past is a memory, the future is an illusion, it hasn't happened yet. All we have is right here, right now, the present moment, Ted. <laughs> so perhaps even the very idea of death can bring us life, can give us a huge amount of power to actually change everything in our lives. What a marvelous perspective. To wake us up in a flash before it literally is all gone in a breath. I believe that most of us, if we were given one week to live, we'd actually want to appreciate every single moment. You know, most of us, or those of us, sorry, who know they only have a short amount of time to live, they give up the struggles, they give up the stresses of life. And they come to a certain contemplation, they come to a certain sense of peace. A peace beyond all understanding. So my question to you today is, why wait? Why wait to create that peace? Is it possible we could now make peace our captain and happiness our ship? and navigate our life in awe and wonder at the experiences that pass us by. A careless driver crashes into your brand new car. Is this time now for road rage and anger? Or is it time to reflect on the great insurance that you have? Your partner leaves you is this time for jealousy, hatred, or to reflect on the ever-changing nature of the universe? You see, perhaps choice is the most life-giving word in our language, more so than love, for I've come to see that we actually have to choose to love or not. We have to choose to be open-hearted, warm, instead of critical and judgmental. We have to choose to be happy or not. And can we make better choices that actually really begin to bring us alive now, in the present moment? Yet, in our emotional twisting and turning of our hearts, so often we find it difficult to find freedom from the negative voices in our head. You know the ones. Self-judgment, self-blame, fear of the future, I'm not good enough, it's a classic. 
So can we also choose right here, right now, a whole new perspective, a new context, a powerful new paradigm through which to live our lives, to choose to come from our hearts at peace, no matter how fierce the storm. So what drives our choices? For many of us, it's about oppressing others. It's about not good enough and hiding that story deep down. It's about looking good at all costs. And I'm reminded here of the words of William Wordsworth. Getting and spending, we lay waste our powers. I've come to a point now where I'm beginning to move beyond getting and spending as the purpose of my life. And I'm really beginning to see that I'm choosing a much bigger picture, a bigger context, connecting to my life in its totality, birth and death. And I'm beginning to welcome death as a teacher, teaching me how to live in the present moment, how to really become alive. And what I'm seeing is death, in a strange way, can actually bring us life. When I'm present to the possibility of my own death at any moment, I can instantly forget old grudges, complaints, arguments, criticisms, and put them all to one side so that I can actually connect and be present to the person in front of me and get deep into conversation. Why? Because we'd want to connect, we'd want to watch every single sunrise, every single sunset that we had left. And we'd want to enjoy every single minute of it before the lights go out. So dare we invite the angel of death, as I call her, to come and sit around our campfire, to join us, to be our ally, and to teach us really how to live right now. To fully engage in the time we have left. How would you behave if that were really the case? What about your loved ones? What difference would that make? So what I've realized is it all actually comes down to a choice. It's a simple choice, but it's pretty tough to do. You see, in the heat of the moment, in the midst of an argument, it's really tough to remember peace. But this is when we have to choose to lean into death so that we can hear her call. Wake up. Wake up. Enjoy. Which reminds me, you can see I like films. The Shawshank Redemption, there were two prisoners sitting by the prison wall, and they say to each other, I guess it comes down to a simple choice, really. We either get busy living, or we get busy dying. So I'd like you to do a simple practice with me just now. And I call it Rose of the Heart. It's a beautiful rose to accompany us. So please, if you will, sit comfortably. Put your right hand on your heart and place your attention and your focus also on your heart. Just to check, you'll know where your heart is, right? I do have a live audience here, great, okay. So now, close your eyes and now, Put your focus, your awareness, onto your heart. Now recall a beautiful, loving moment in your life. A time when you felt a real connection to someone close. A place. A memory. Feel your heart opening just a little, relaxing and letting go. And as you relax, your face and your shoulders, breathe gently. Now as you picture this loving moment in your life, imagine 
that you can breathe through your heart. Just feel yourself breathing through your heart. And like a beautiful rose opening more and more with each breath, you feel a peace, a gentleness, as you keep breathing slowly and easily, feeling your heart opening a little more each time. And you see your heart is bathed in a beautiful light, the loving light of peace. And as you keep breathing through your heart, relax, release, let go. You may even feel a slight tingling sensation as your heart opens and the light comes into your heart. You feel at peace, completely at peace. Now, gently open your eyes and keep still. Keep breathing. Congratulations. You all just created peace, and you can do it whenever you so choose. So keeping this peace has become my purpose, my North Star. And I now see the beauty of life through new eyes. I'm more engaged and fully inspired by my business. And I laugh so much more. So I'm here in Panama, inspiring executives to be more peaceful, to be more productive through peace and having peace as their bottom line in business. Why? Because it speeds everything up. And for individuals to learn the skills of peace in their personal relationships. So I have three tools I'd like to share with you this afternoon. I use them myself. I use them with my clients, who now call me the peace whisperer. <laughs> and I call them my three graces of peace. Number one is purpose. My purpose is to be like a lighthouse, to shine my light no matter how fierce the storm cutting through the darkness of negative emotions such as sadness, anger, rejection and experiencing them and then releasing them back into the light. <coughs> Number two is presence. To really get present, I see my life as though it's on a movie screen. That's me running in the middle there. And I put my life on a screen as I see it unfolding. And I begin to ask myself, am I at peace right here, right now? I check with my heart. If my heart is tense and closed, I'm not at peace. And if I'm not at peace, what do I do? I return myself to peace and I do the rose of the heart. My third is passion. Like the trunk of a wise old oak tree, I feed all the different leaves of my life experience with energy and excitement so that I can touch the hearts and minds of those around me, so that we can live fully, laugh openly, and love completely. These three graces of peace, <laughs> moving on, have become a beautiful daily practice for me in which I'm beginning to wake up from my little sleep, as Shakespeare said. A wonderful experience that when I go to bed at night and I close my eyes, I know that I have lived my life greatly. And I love my mother and my brother for teaching me, for showing me that my life can be magnificent any time I choose. So now, as I lean into life and I push through boundaries, of stress, struggle, shame, busyness. I've really come to realize, and I've come to deeply know, that both you and I are only visitors to this planet. So, just for the record, 
you're 18 minutes closer to the last train out of here. So may you live, laugh, and dance with life, and may the angel of death dance with you. Let's dance. <laughs> Thank you very much.